for the last couple of months, uh, our membership chairman, Mike Hamer, has been diligently working to identify the spouses of deceased members in order to present them with a Department of Defense certificate honoring their spouse's service, themselves, their sacrifice, and a special commemorative pin. This is one of the events taking place during this 50th anniversary of the Vietnam War celebration. Perhaps late, but then again, heartfelt on the part of the country and certainly ourselves as fellow members of those who have fallen. In addition, we, the Atlanta Vietnam Veterans Business Association, have prepared a certificate that from now on will be presented to the family of any member who dies while a member of the Atlanta Vietnam Veterans Business Association. We'll show you both of those as we call these honored guests forward. Dan Holtz, our board chairman, will present the Department of Defense certificate and pin, and I will be privileged to present the AVVBA certificate. First, let me get my roster out here. Ms. Pamela Aiken, the widow of John Aiken. Ms. Pamela Baskin. No, she's not here, John. Okay, sorry. Ms. Beth Craig. She's not here. Okay. Ms. Ann D'Agostino, the widow of Bruce. And y'all know this is not something I would ever want. Uh, Ferris is not but here either. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. say something. I am thrilled to say his name is spelled correctly. When I got his memorial certificate from the VA with its nice gold embossed eagle and its filigree signed by President Donald J. Trump himself, sort of, they didn't even spell his name right. And the VA says they honor our veterans. This is got that one right too. AVVPA. Yeah. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Carolyn Dillon, widow of Robert Dillon. Ms. Betty Hines. Okay. Ms. Gerda McCoy, widow of George McCoy. Ms. Cindy Pardue, widow of Donald Pardue.
<laughs> yeah, come on over. <laughs> we didn't choreograph this. <laughs> you happy now? Okay. I'm going to start charging. <laughs> Thank you very much. Ms. Linda Stewart, widow of Charles Stewart. Get in between us, that way yes. the cameraman will get happy. <laughs> On behalf of a great foundation, thank you. Thank you Here's so your much. This is from ourselves. Thank you. Uh, one thing I'd like to do in conjunction with this, since uh, this was an initiative of our association, is first of all, show it to you. Uh, John Butler, thank you very much for your work in getting the embossing and everything done. So it's very handsome. And it simply reads, whereas it has pleased Almighty God, the great commander, to summon to his immortal legions our beloved comrades, and then the name of the individual we're honoring, members of the Atlanta Vietnam Veterans Business Association, and whereas we humbly bow to the will of divine providence, while ever cherishing in our hearts the memory of his distinguished service to our country and his outstanding contributions to AVVBA comradeship. Now therefore be it resolved, that the AVVBA does mourn the passing of our comrade, and we commend to all people his works and to God his spirit, and be it further resolved that in token of our common grief, a copy of this resolution be presented to his family this first day of May 2018. These will be presented henceforth to the families of any of our members who pass. And I want to I want to thank once again for it was Mike Hamer, our membership chairman, who uh, diligently worked very, very hard trying to identify the families of deceased members and to uh, prepare an invitation and to invite them here today. And Mike, thank you for organizing this wonderful ceremony to honor these spouses. You know, when a lot of us came in the Army, some uh, drill sergeant might tell you, if the Army wanted you to have a family, they'd have issued you one. Uh, if you saw the movie, We Were Soldiers Once and Young, that is a truth in the front part of the movie, whereas casualties started to be taken, the death notification was delivered by a yellow cab driver and it was a telegram from Department of the Army saying uh, your loved one so-and-so has uh, perished or is missing in action. Uh, what an impersonal way to notify the loved ones of our soldiers. Things have changed a great deal as they should have. The Army learned from that experience as did the other services and now we take great care to honor the families of those who've fallen, take care of those families who, are, who have uh, been wounded and those who are missing in action. We had a soldier missing in action, later found dead of, a, frankly, an assassination, a bullet to the back of the head. But sometimes it, was, uh, it would bring tears to your eyes as his family would phone and ask, have you received an update? or I'd meet with them. We had a full-time casualty officer assigned to take care of them, and when his remains were finally recovered and identified, the Army took great care to hold a proper memorial service with a dignified return. And
and uh, I still keep his picture uh, handy with me to remind me of our responsibilities towards our soldiers and their families. At this time, I'd also like to ask to stand so we can recognize and applaud the spouses of other members who are in our audience today. Would you please stand? Thank you all for blessing us with your attendance. Thank you all for what you do on our respective home fronts and what you have done during our service to our great country. And uh, after this, there might be an impromptu meeting uh, led by uh, Patty Bedford and uh, where some of the ladies are trying to get an auxiliary of the AVVBA begun and uh, get it started. At this time, I'd like to introduce Tony Hilliard, who will uh, make an announcement regarding the Georgia National Military Summary Cemetery, Carillon. Thank you. Um, I am the AVVBA's representative to the Georgia National Cemetery Advisory Council. Uh, and I've been given a few minutes to ask for your support for a project that we've initiated up there. Ed, can I have that? Each one of us has spoken these words either at an enlistment ceremony or a commissioning ceremony. They represent an insurance policy that we have agreed to pay the premiums on. That agreement places us in a very select group of citizens called veterans. We hear a lot of bloviating today by talking heads in the media about heroes. Um, we know who heroes are, personally. Um, and the nation, later this month, will recognize them. We have some heroes up at the Canton National Cemetery, but most of the men and women who were interred there our veterans who paid the premiums on that insurance policy, did their duty, came home, created families, and built lives. Um, and we're speaking on behalf of those folks. Could I have the next slide, Ed? The folks up at the National Cemetery, those who were interred there, um, we shun, I think veterans shun the term heroes. Uh, the people who are up there are, as I said, they're the, the men and women who did their duty, came home, and built their lives. Uh, they're resting now in the hallowed ground that the nation has provided for them. Um, the advisory council uh, that I'm a member of has taken on the mission of creating a memorial to the, popo to the, uh, the veterans who are interred there. Um, if you've been to Arlington National Cemetery and heard the uh, Netherlands Carillon, uh, you understand the dignity and the, uh, the serenity that the music adds to that place. We want to do the same thing for um, our folks up at, up at uh, Canton. Um, can I have the next slide? This is what we're attempting to build. It's a, a 40 foot tall tower with three cast bells, three cast bronze bells. Uh, it will be able to play over a thousand songs, including some bab, bab, pipe, bab pipe, pipe music. Uh, it will be located on the, the high ground at the entrance to the cemetery, so the music will be heard throughout the area. It's been approved by the National Cemetery Association, both the design and the location. And the, the people who are going to build it are the Verdon Company. Uh, they're an internationally known builder of this type of memorial. Um, they have 20,000 installations all over the world. Next slide, please. This is the hard part. Uh, this is the cost estimate to get this project done. Um, 
In that cost, in that $385,000 is a requirement by the federal government to include uh, ongoing maintenance. So that's a complete package cost. To date, we've raised right around $140,000, both in cash received and in commitments from organizations and companies. Um, you, you see what the, the, the delta is, what we need to do. We have a long road ahead of us. On your tables, you'll see brochures, both for the cemetery proper and also for the, pro the project that we're, we're working on. Uh, we appreciate any help you can give us. Obviously, we would like uh, financial contributions, but there's also other assistance that we might be able to uh, solicit from you, and that's uh, you, most, most of us work in the business community, and you know people, uh, who might be interested in helping with a memorial like this. We would ask you if you see or hear or know of someone who you think might be uh, interested in participating in this, let us know or give us an introduction or something like that so we can go and, and make uh, uh, the pitch to those folks uh, for this, uh, this project. This is a good thing. We ask for your help. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Tony. We've been well represented uh, by Tony since uh, we elected to establish uh, his position as our uh, liaison. Uh, while we're on it, I'll uh, make a couple of other uh, quick announcements. Sue Verhoff from Atlanta History Center. Uh, while Sue's coming up, just a reminder that uh, the 30th of this month is our annual uh, picnic at the Atlanta History Center. Uh, there's an email out, and uh, it's essentially uh, casual clothing. Uh, bring your own uh, snacks, food, appropriate uh, picnic kind of uh, things. And uh, Max, anything else to add to that? Monday the 28th. Monday the 28th, starting at 5 p.m., at the Atlanta History Center. Sue has an announcement about an event beginning there. Um, is Ed in the booth? There's a, there was a slide with the invitation, if that could be displayed. Um, just real briefly, we opened a new exhibition uh, that's uh, World War I related last month. It's called Fields of Battle, Lands of Peace, the Doughboys, 1917 to 1918. It came to us from the National World War I Museum and Memorial. It's the only southern venue in which this exhibition is going to be displayed. And it's unique in that it is all outdoors. It is displayed throughout the 33-acre gardens, uh, the Goizueta Gardens at the Atlanta History Center. And we have a unique opportunity for the photographer who created this exhibition to conduct a curator's tour. We have two tours that are scheduled on March the 12th, one at 1 o'clock and one at 3 o'clock. And all you have to do to be able to participate in that is send an email um, to Michael Rose or call him or call me, um, whatever's easiest for you, uh, for you and a guest. Space is very limited, as you can imagine. This would be a small group that would walk throughout the gardens. Um, I'll warn you that there is a little bit of walking involved because it is an outdoor exhibition, but nothing strenuous. Um, the purpose of the exhibit is to honor the, the uh, millions of, of uh, Americans and, and way more millions worldwide um, who gave their lives during World War I. And the, the, the um, focus of it is the land itself. It's a beautiful photographic exhibition with archival material and period photographs to show how the landscape has healed and hopefully healing um, some of those wounds from World War I. So I hope you'll take advantage of it. We would love to have you. Okay. John Butler, who's the, uh, one of the uh, legends of World War I, said he'd send out an email uh, for that. John, only if it's accompanied by your picture in a Speedo. That's an inside uh, joke. There's an uh, event beginning tomorrow. I apologize for the late notice. It's at the Currahee. 
Museum up in Toccoa, Georgia, where the uh, band of brothers from the proud 101st Airborne trained for World War II begins at 8 with a free light breakfast. At 9 is a program run by the Missing in America, Missing in Action project to honor those. If you want to jot this down real quick, it's at 160 Alexander Street, Toccoa, Georgia. 30577. Again, a free breakfast, and then a uh, program begins at uh, 9. And the museum is there. Actually, the event is at the train station where the band of brothers and other 101st from the 506 Parachute Infantry Regiment uh, arrived by train for their training. Uh, it's a wonderful small museum, but it's wonderful and brings back a lot of memories. Um, as we noted, five on the uh, 30th, uh, 28th of May at uh, the Atlanta History Center, Veterans Park, our uh, annual Memorial Day picnic. What a wonderful day to celebrate. Uh, you're welcome to bring uh, children, grandchildren. And the park is at 130 West Paces Ferry Road, at the intersection with Slayton Drive. Parking is available across the street at the Regions Bank lot. Vietnam War, our service in that war. Uh, veterans of that war were portrayed in ways that uh, are simply inaccurate at best. The reasons for the war were uh, not brought out as they should be. The fact that our country and in turn all of those who served undertook an honorable effort, most honorable. And over 58,000 paid the ultimate sacrifice. Uh, as we have discussed and debated about how we should proceed in trying to rebut those uh, untruths, myths, and inaccuracies, we have uh, established a Speakers Bureau led by Bob Badcock, Babcock. I'll ask Bob to join me in just a minute and update us on that effort. One last thing before I turn it over to Bob. Many of you have had initiatives and undertaken efforts to contact someone who may be able to provide us an inroad into the media so that we could put together a uh, film or a uh, interview and air it on television, perhaps radio, uh, in newspapers, and or provide financial backing for such an initiative. Uh, I get an average of about one email a day. Uh, that is on the docket for the board to discuss this afternoon, not to wrap a bureaucracy around it, but merely to understand what are the various initiatives. So if you are not a member of the board and have such a contact, either firsthand, secondary, tertiary, that is you know someone who knows someone who then knows a person who might have said they're willing to support us, and you will not be at the board meeting, please jot that down on a note and provide it to me at the conclusion of our luncheon. All we're trying to do is ensure that, frankly, we don't trip all over each other trying to build a film when somebody else is working on one over here and we hadn't coordinated that with our Speakers Bureau. So at this time I'd like to turn it over to Bob Babcock, the head of our Speakers Bureau, who will update us on our efforts uh, there. Hey Bob. Hey. Y'all are getting tired of seeing me up here, aren't you? I don't think I have missed being up here in a long time. And as bashful as I am, I worry about this, you know. Uh, this book right here, Alan Gravel is in it. Others of you, Pete Mecca, one of us, he's planning to do 10 of these. You all have a story. Alan, you, you're proud to have this, aren't you? In fact, his airplane is on the back cover. 
if you go by without uh, buying a book, Pete's going to be upset with you. But more importantly, if you haven't, you haven't gotten your story told, Sue will also be upset with you, as will Pete. Let's talk a bit about the Speakers Bureau. I'm going to run through real quickly for those who weren't here last month what we talked about last month, but there's a couple of other things. So here we go. Remember, I introduced the point that Burns and Novick have told the bad and the ugly about the Vietnam War. Uh, it's our job as Vietnam vets to tell the truth, the good that we did. So that is what the Speaker's Bureau is about, not to bash Burns and Novick, but to tell the good, the true stories. Some of you may have seen the piece I put out on Facebook yesterday about the 43rd anniversary of the fall of Saigon and the end of the Vietnam War. I got this note that's up here on the board uh, from a friend of mine who I barely know, but he was a senior in high school, as you can read, when the war ended. And he took the time to send that to me yesterday after reading that on Facebook. His dad was a World War II guy. His dad couldn't explain why we were so misaligned as Vietnam vets. So there's lots of people out there who are not Vietnam vets who are lined up with us. Uh, Okay, I'm not smart enough to make this work. What am I supposed to point it at? Oh, uh hey, I have I have come up with something that is very you know everybody. Kerry King was talking about we want factual history. Let me tell you where this fact came out. It came square out of my brain. I started at 10, went to 30, then went back to 20. So that's sort of, you know, Kentucky windage. <laughs> My point is, we got 20%. Call it 10%, call it whatever percent you're comfortable with, who I don't care what we do, they love us, they support us, and they're always with us. And we got another percent underneath who hate us, will always hate us, and we're not going to change them. So let's don't worry about them. There are so many Americans who take for granted what we did, and the Vietnam War is ancient history. They don't give it any thought. Today's young people don't think about it. I mentioned to my son yesterday, Mark, you know today is the 43rd anniversary of the fall of Saigon? He hadn't even heard about it, thought about it. When I put that up on Facebook, I had about 30 comments and likes on Facebook. A week ago, I put something up about 15 years ago in Iraq and got about 300. Iraq is current. We're old. We got to fix that because there are too many people who have forgotten about the good that we did Every one of us in this room. Okay. So, you've heard me say this, and I'm not going to beat it to death too much. Uh, are you on the Speakers Bureau? How many of you have signed up for the Speakers Bureau? Okay. If you're not, ask yourself... Why aren't you? And I particularly put this up because I knew there would be a bunch of wives in the room today. And if your husband is not on the Speaker's Bureau, I assume you will probably on the way home do a little bit of coaching to get him to get his head out of his fourth point of contact and get with us. So anyway, 
we need more speakers. Somebody sent a note back, and it disturbed me. We need to get more enlisted speakers. You know what? I don't think, as I look across here, I don't think of rank associated with anybody in this room. I think about one rank that we have, and that's called American Veterans. Three stars, his name is Ron. I was a lowly dumb lieutenant for crying out loud, and I'm up here. So how lower can you be than a lowly lieutenant, right? But anyway, don't anybody feel, if you feel slighted, please call me or email me. I am not trying to exclude anybody. We all have a different perspective of the story that we need to tell. There we go. What we're going to do, and I said this last month, and it's sort of fallen on its face. So we've extended it from May to May and June. We have got to, and this is something I want everybody in here. Uh, Kurt Mueller gave me a, a contact just a minute ago. We need some speaking engagements for May and June. And we're going to have some three-person teams go out. Ron and uh, Carrie and I are going to lead them. And we're going to sort of test the water, see what that 60% that sits out in a Kiwanis club or in a veterans group or in a church group or a schools group to tell us what's their position on the Vietnam War. Have you seen the Burns thing? What do you think about it? What do you think? Do I look like a murderer, a rapist, a baby killer? A answer that. I can take it. I don't see any out here in the room that I, that I think is that. But, the, you know, think about it. Between the time we came home from Vietnam and the Gulf War is when they finally started recognizing us a little bit. And how many of you get sick and tired of people saying, thank you for your service? That is like saying, good morning, nice day out, isn't it? That's meaningless. But we got to change that. We have to get in front of people and we have to show them what a real Vietnam vet all of us are. Next man. There we go. Then what we're going to do this summer after we've found out what these folks are doing, what they think about us and what we need to tell them, we're going to go back out and we're going to build a, really a fast start, starting when school starts back again, to get out and talk to as many people in the metro Atlanta area as we can. We're not going to focus on bashing Burns and Novick. We're going to focus on the good of the Vietnam vet. Next slide. So we're going to attack. We're going to attack. You guys, I wasn't in that parade, but you guys attack every Veterans Day at the parade. They see us. We are sharp. We got to get out in front of civic groups. One on 50, one on 100, one on 25, church groups, schools. A lot of us went to George Walton Academy. Several in this room have been out to Drew Charter School. I'll be out there Monday being interviewed by the students at that school. Sue trained those students out there to interview veterans. We have got to get engaged, and that's what this Speakers Bureau and the community outreach program is all about. Next slide. So, here's what I need from you. You see my email address, bob at deedspublishing.com. What your job is, find speaking opportunities for us. Send me a name, a phone number, or an email address, preferably, because it's easier to get people that way. Send it to me so we can set up some close-in speaking engagements. But also let the people you know know that we'll be around in mass in the fall and winter. Participate, for crying out loud. Uh, sign up.
Do you care? Do you want to get the story out? I've been up here flapping my mouth since October. Are y'all going to flap with me? Deeds, not words. Thanks. Thanks, Bob. Uh, I just want to add one thing. We are looking for maximum participation. Uh, yes, not all of us can be as handsome, erudite, and articulate as Bob Babcock. Or as bald-headed. Bald uh, but some of us who uh, sometimes have a hard time still fitting into a uniform or something, all of us have a story to tell, regardless of service, regardless of branch, regardless of experiences. We owe it to those 58 thousand plus names on that wall to the Vietnam veterans who still remain in veterans hospitals to those of us who carry the wounds physical and mental to this day as well as the millions of South Vietnamese soldiers and civilians just a quick story I got a picture not long ago of Colonel Nguyen Minh Chow, South Vietnamese Marine Corps. Colonel Chow was the counterpart of a very young captain, as the captain was me on a Cords advisory tour, my second tour. Colonel Chow held three American Silver Stars, six Purple Hearts, had been permanently wounded, could only walk with a cane. And for those who disparage the South Vietnamese leadership, you need to talk to me about Colonel Chow, one of the most honest, articulate, smart, caring leaders I ever met. Couldn't serve with the Marines anymore, so he was seconded to be a district chief. And I was as uh, proud to be his counterpart, really I was an assister. Colonel Chow's family escaped during the fall of Saigon on a boat, finally made it to California, Colonel Chow was released from a re-education camp three years later. He was hated, but he survived it. You can imagine the torture that he underwent. We owe it to people like him. We forget those. They were our allies. Our country promised them something, and our leadership in Washington pulled the rug out from under them and left them wanting and left them asking us, who had no authority to do that, a simple question. Why did you promise to help me and your country left me? We owe the answer to that to our people. That's why it's so terribly important. A couple of other very quick notes about the future. Our next luncheon will be the 10th of July. Uh, please plan ahead for Veterans Day Parade in uh, AVVBA. We normally, after the, we have a marching unit in the parade, the Freedom Ball downtown will be that night. Tickets are normally $75 a head. We'll probably reserve three tables again for AVVBA members. It would be nice if we had to go in for a fourth or even a fifth. And after the parade, we assemble at Der Biergarten downtown for, uh, <coughs> for some refreshments, shall we call it. Nice uh, German beer. Okay, any other announcements? All right, if I can have the mic men here, we'll uh, introduce uh, guests. The SOP is the mic men do not retain.